Is the age of YouTube censorship approaching? Today we're going to be discussing how YouTube's new policies on ad revenue monetization are going to possibly affect our show and YouTube in the long run. I don't even know what you just said. I don't either. This topic sounds boring. Don't you think it's time we finally talked about Predator? Well, quite honestly, I wanted to do a video on memes, but this big story broke, so now I have to do a fucking video about this. This whole YouTube non-advertiser-friendly monetization thing exploded last week, and I feel like we have a responsibility to talk about it because it does affect our channel, and it affects you guys as our viewers, and potentially, you know, internet culture. What is not advertiser-friendly content? So these are videos that were previously making money, and now it turns out that YouTube has decided that they can no longer make money due to the content of those videos. Well, according to this handy dandy list, that includes sexually suggestive content, including partial nudity and sexual humor, violence, including display of serious injury, inappropriate language, including vulgar language, promotion of drugs and regulated substances, controversial or sensitive subjects and events, including subjects related to war, political conflicts, natural disasters, and tragedies, even if graphic imagery is not shown. Well, good thing our channel doesn't have any of that stuff in it, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, Robot, let's go through this list and, and make a checklist of what we got going on on our own channel. To begin with, the cursing rule might be a problem for us in particular. <laughs> this movie is a shit show. Fuck you! Meta retarded weirdo fucked up. Fucking pumped. Fuck you, kid. Like, I fucking died laughing. Let's fucking. Sure, you can fucking agree with me. It's the fucking most fun of your life in the world. Fuck! Like, fuck kids. Did you just say. F kids? If you know me. Oh no, I told you your dirty sailor mouth was gonna ruin us one day. I know, it's finally getting me in trouble, finally. But it's taken a long time. Why can't you not curse so much? It's so much fun to curse. I, you know, I've read a lot of articles saying that more intelligent people curse, and I think it's true. Have you read any articles about bragging about yourself? Uh... What about drugs? We don't talk about drugs. I mean, we haven't talked about drugs that much. I mean, I've mentioned it here and there a little bit. I do think that marijuana is better for you than alcohol. I mean, I think that's pretty much a fact. And I'd like to be able to talk about it if I want to talk about it and not have to worry about having my ad revenue pulled. Sensitive subjects, including war and controversial subjects. We're not controversial, right? Uh, I mean, sometimes we bring up some of these things because in art and in movies and in comic books, they talk about all sorts of political things and sensitive, controversial subjects, and then we talk about the themes and stuff like that. So that could be construed as controversial. Our Mr. Robot review could be construed as controversial. They'll do fucked up shit. They'll do it because they have to, because that's what everybody's doing. My friend Bobo said that you are a communist, a dirty commie. <laughs> as far as sexually explicit material goes, we don't do a ton of that stuff, but I did do a sexy calendar a couple years ago, and we had a lot of behind the scenes videos of our sexy cosplays that we did and i just released a new dark phoenix body paint poster and that's nudity um oh my so gosh. That. and not to mention the fact that you're naked every episode that you're in robot oh no you're right i'm not wearing pants you're not wearing pants and my dirty mouth might get us in trouble but your pantslessness is just as bad at least i don't have nipples you're the dirty slut with nipples. What do you call all this stuff on your chest? I figured all of those were nipples. Those, are, nipples. those are buttons. What are you talking about? Those are nipples. They're red. Those are buttons. They're red nipples. How many nipples do you have? That's a lot of nipples. You're right. I've got more nipples than a cat. <laughs> That's gross. Oh, no. YouTube is over. Pack it up. We're going home. That's yeah, it. There's a big... Put the cat in a box. It's over. There's a big uh, there's a big uproar in the internet, obviously. People are not super stoked about change, especially stuff that's messing with their monies. So a lot of people have started the hashtag YouTube is over, having YouTube is over parties. And personally, I don't know. I can't say whether YouTube is over or not. I doubt that. Because uh, honestly, we just don't know how this is going to affect all of us yet. Uh, I know that YouTube did say that they've already been doing this, demonetizing videos. They just haven't been telling you about it for months and months, I guess. Well, that's weird. Well, yeah, that's really weird and not cool. Here's the thing about YouTube. 
YouTube is really confusing. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like the analytics and the back end, it's all a mess. It's kind of hard to figure out what's going on. You have no idea why some videos you get paid more and some videos you don't make any money on. Do you pick the commercials that you put before our videos? No. I thought you were able to do that. No. Well then how do they pick the commercials to put before the videos? I don't know. A lot of times there's commercials in front of my videos that have nothing to do with anything that anyone wants to buy. It makes no sense. This is how it's always been. What was the commercial that played before this video? I don't know. Maybe a Bud Light commercial. Maybe a Target commercial. Maybe a, a movie preview. Maybe, uh, I don't know. But also understand that the decision to demonetize doesn't necessarily lie within YouTube and the people that work there, it has more to do with what the advertisers want. The thing about all of this is, is that I don't know, I really don't believe that it's advertisers that are doing this. That's my main thing because I feel like everybody knows, including advertisers, that it doesn't matter. On YouTube, what content you pair with something, like it really doesn't matter. It's really not gonna affect anything, okay? That's the fucking deal, all right? And the problem is YouTube has never been able to make itself advertiser friendly because of the very nature of the platform. What? YouTube wants to get in on that traditional old media money, advertising money, okay? Because that's where advertisers really spend their money. They don't spend it on the internet yet. Like they're starting to, they're doing it more and more and more as television is sinking, as new media is growing, you know, like there's this transition of advertisers coming to the internet, okay? But because Google is such a, a large platform with so many different everything, I mean, everything is on YouTube, you know, how do you really coax your advertisers to come over there, especially when people have things like ad blocker and skip ad and things like that. Google has had a really hard time getting money from advertisers for YouTube. And fun fact, a lot of people don't know this, in the entire history of YouTube in like 11 years, YouTube has never made its money back for Google. They have always lost money on YouTube. YouTube does not know how to make its money back. What? Yes. That doesn't make any sense. How can YouTube lose money every year? Here's the deal. YouTube is a very expensive platform to run because it's like so many people are uploading like so much stuff and there's like so many server farms that they have to have to keep all this stuff and it just keeps growing and growing and it's just so insane, okay? And it's like so popular, like YouTube, oh my God, it's so popular. So they're not gonna stop doing YouTube even though they're not necessarily making the money back from the ad revenue sales and they have a parent company, Google. Google can just take a loss for a while, but eventually, I mean, Google being a company, they're gonna be like, hey, at some point we really have to stop losing money on YouTube. Is there any way we can stop losing money on having this awesome site that everybody goes to, you know? And I mean, that's a real concern and I totally understand that as a business. Like you don't wanna have something that is at a loss all the time. So if YouTube is really failing to make money, do you think that's why they're doing this? I don't know all the facts, so I don't pretend to know all the facts, but I will say that that might be something, that seems like that would be something that would be a factor in all of this. Don't you think there's better ways for YouTube to make money? Um, I don't know. My job is just to make content to bring people to YouTube. And that's why this is really so frustrating for me is because YouTube does need people like me because, you know, we bring people to their platform consistently, right? But then when you start like, tightening those thumb screws, when you start tightening the screws on us and making it harder and harder and harder for us to continue to make these shows, you're going to edge people out of creating content on YouTube. They're gonna start creating content somewhere else or leave the nest or do whatever. And uh, and I don't know. It's just, it seems, seems like a real catch-22 scenario. <laughs> By taking away monetization, it is a form of censorship. Taking away the ability to monetize a video where you're saying things that they don't deem okay. That's been described as censorship with a different name because if you do this on the regular and you have no advertising, it's not sustainable. And some are calling this censorship. However, YouTube is saying that this has nothing to do with censorship. This is all about making sure that ads go onto ad-friendly content. Is this censorship? YouTube is a great platform because it allows all these unique voices to be heard that we've never heard from before. 
we have to realize how awesome it is because only a few years back, we did not have a video platform in which millions of people could watch and learn about subjects that traditional media does not cover. And now you can find out about anything on YouTube, like anything, like how to change a serpentine belt on your Yaris. And this is a big factor in bringing awarenesses to people, helping them to learn and evolve and be better at car maintenance. Or revolt against your government. I didn't, I, I still took it into the shop. I actually didn't change it myself. It looked too hard. <laughs> so YouTube helped you to know not to do it yourself. Yes, and I was grateful for that. Look, this is a tricky subject because it's not necessarily censorship yet. But as it stands, it could lead to creator self-censorship in the future as creators across the board attempt to sterilize themselves in order to make a living for their businesses. Here's my thing, all right? I'm all about that freedom of expression, okay? I love it. I love freedom of expression, whether it's through art, whether it's through movies, storytelling, whether it's through internet videos, whatever it is. I like people being able to speak their truth from their perspective, because that's what I do. And I think that's really special. Uh, and I'm always, I'm very vigilant about watching to see if anyone's trying to, to dampen that. You know, like I'm just like like fucking vigilant about that. And so when I when I hear about all these things happening, you know, there's just some alarms that go off in my brain that I'm like, ooh, this could lead to some stuff that isn't that awesome. I mean, it doesn't seem that bad, right? It's like it's like, oh, it's just it it might not be that bad. It might affect a very small portion of the population, but it's just another indicator that and they're just tightening the screws, you know, just a little bit, you know, tightening those screws so that it makes it harder and harder and harder for people to speak their truth to one another. Because the thing is, is you know, when this whole internet thing started, like people didn't know where this was gonna go and like they didn't take it seriously. And now the internet is like taking over. I mean, new media and old media are getting ready to just like have to come together and like blah. And so now the people in power are looking at it more seriously and being like, oh fuck, like we can't like let this like go crazy. We can't let them run willy nilly on the internet. Like they've got to have some sort of something going on there. Because I mean, if you look at YouTube, there's a lot of like news channels on there that are like covering subjects that the the media, the mass media isn't covering. A lot of like interesting stuff there. I mean, there's tons of interesting stuff going on in there that's talking about really subversive subjects that you're not supposed to be seeing or that you don't see in mass media. And those are really important things to have, I think. And so, you know, when I see stuff like this, I, it brings up this idea of the salami slicing effect. What's that? So, so say you have this big salami, right? And somebody like slices a little piece off, you know, and you don't really notice, you know, but then they slice another little piece off and it's like, oh, it's not that bad. But then you turn around, they keep slicing, you know, and then your salami's gone and then you don't have any more freedom salami and you can't say what you need to say anymore, you know, because that's the thing. Uh, like. If someone's going to oppress you, they're not just generally gonna do it all at once. You know, it's, it's a process. It's a very gradual process, you know? And I see that we're coming to this really crazy boiling point in our society, you know? And like, it's just, there's a lot of revolution in the air. There's a lot of stuff that's getting ready to collapse. You know, things is, I think shit's getting ready to get real, real in the next 10 years. Uh, things are gonna get real different, real crazy, real fast. And so I feel like the powers that be also see that and so they're also trying to kind of dampen that as much as they can and stave it off and make it harder for people to communicate freely with one another you know they want to control that mental environment and get people not thinking about things that they don't want them to be thinking about you know so it's just it's concerning from that aspect for me at the very top there's very few people at the very bottom there's a lot of people right and if all the people at the bottom all got this idea and were able to communicate it to one another and all band together and say, no, we're not gonna do this thing or that thing or whatever, that you can make real change. And the internet is something that, uh, that is possibly would allow people to do that. So it has to be in check. This is too serious. I'm just gonna let whatever happens happens and not worry about it. <laughs> I just wanted to talk about memes today. This, this sucks. I don't want to talk about corporations in China. This is not what I signed up about. But if you don't talk about it, they're going to take over. <sighs> I know. Sucks. <laughs>
it is also possible that there is no insidious plan to try to slowly censor us, and that this is really just the result of a company trying to make their platform uh, make some money for them, and also for advertisers to make sure they're getting the most bang for their ad revenue dollar. And in order for that to happen, some change has to be made. And for right now, this is what they've come up with. I think that advertisers and advertising agencies are stuck in their old ways. They don't understand how online content works, right? And they want super safe, buttoned up news content that doesn't appeal to anyone. The reason why television news isn't doing well is because they're afraid to delve into the controversial topics. They're afraid to get into the details, right? They do ridiculous, shallow coverage of everything. And so, okay, you can advertise there all you want, but the audience is leaving. So let's all work together to help advertisers catch up to the real world that exists today. Because by the way, that's n yes, I guess it's a form of criticism of them, but it's also to help them because they can't sell their products if they don't know who their audience is. Exactly. Their audience isn't Ozzy and Harriet anymore, it's us. Let's talk about advertisers for just a minute. In my opinion, I feel like the advertising has no effect on the video, and the video has no effect on the advertising. What does any, that mean? Well, if you watch these videos, you know that the commercial that's put beforehand is just some random commercial, and vice versa. I have no idea what ad is going to be placed in front of my video. So how am I supposed to be advertising friendly to such a wide range of different products and commercials. I'm not. Like I don't know, you know. So it's What was the commercial before this video? I don't know. What what products have you seen commercials for? I don't I don't know. I skip them. <laughs> <laughs> And I feel like whatever I do and say in my show really has no bearing on whatever product uh, is, that is being advertised before the show. If you like McDonald's and you see a McDonald's commercial before the show, you're going to still go to McDonald's. If you don't like McDonald's and you see a McDonald's commercial before my show, you're not going to go to McDonald's. Now, this isn't to say that commercials on YouTube are useless. They can be very effective at reminding the consumer that your product exists. Like, say, your movie's coming out. But to hold up the idea that video content on YouTube after a commercial could somehow prevent consumers from buying that product is a 1950s way of thinking that doesn't really apply anymore. And anyone who regularly uses YouTube knows that. Or reminding people that there's a sale at Burger King. Yeah, there's a new fucking chicken sandwich from hell. <laughs> Triple slop whopper. <laughs> Triple slop whopper. <laughs> Only this week only. <laughs> the fiery slop whopper. <laughs> it's a red bun. <laughs> It'll shed fire. <laughs> it's got little devil horns on it. We should be in marketing. I know. What the fuck? We just we've been doing it all wrong. Here's my possible solution for all of this, okay? I wish that YouTube would allow me to pick the types of commercials that I think are appropriate for my audience because I know my audience better than they do and I know what you guys actually might consider buying. So if they gave me the power to select a dozen or so products that I think you guys would be interested in, I think that that would help make YouTube a better place for ad revenue. I think advertisers would be happier. I would be happier. Everyone would be happier and they wouldn't have to censor us. But they don't let me do that yet. Oh, that's a pretty good idea. Well, what kind of commercials would you pick? I would pick alcohol commercials of all sorts. I would pick uh, movie previews, television show previews, anything Marvel DC related, comic book related stuff. I'm a big fan of La Croix. When they have a commercial, I'll put that on there. There's actually a lot of products that I use and like that I would totally be down for having their commercials in front of my stuff. You might be onto something. I think the world would be a better place if we could just pick the types of commercials that went before our content. It would be like an ad revenue utopia. Yeah, but then nobody would ever pick the credit card commercials. I mean, well, if you if the credit card commercials offered more money for theirs than people would, you know, because then you could have these commercials are worth this much, these commercials are maybe worth this much. There's all sorts of ways they can deal with this. There's way better ways of doing this, in my opinion. You could take this advice for free, Google. I don't even want credit for it. Just make it happen. So how does this affect the comic book girl named Teen show? 
Well, here's the thing. I don't really know yet. You know, these things are still kind of happening. It's like still figuring itself out. So we'll see kind of what the damage is as we go forward. But the thing about our show is, is that the ad revenue that we've received has never been enough to fully fund the show and to keep it going. It's Ever. not? No. I thought YouTubers make millions of dollars. Well, if you're, if you're a top tier, like Jenna Marbles, yeah. But if you're mid tier, like us, then like, nah, brah, like, and you need every little penny that you can get, okay? Like every cent. And even though this show doesn't even pay our rent most months, uh, it is great that we have that chunk because then we add that to our other things that we're doing, okay? Because like, this is why you see us doing uh, Kickstarters and calendars and why we recently started our Patreon and things like that and posters and merch, video on demand. I mean, we're all about diversifying that portfolio, okay? Because I've never, I don't trust big companies, okay? I don't. I know that they could pull the rug out from under me at any fucking moment. So I have been diligently working through my life to make sure that I don't depend on them only to keep my show going because they don't owe me shit and they could fuck me over at any moment. It's first class fuckery like this on YouTube that really pushes me to look for other opportunities outside of this platform for real opportunities where instead of making a show and then hoping that they give you a couple of pennies from some McDonald's ads that they put in front of your videos, you get paid ahead of time to make the video. That's the dream, you know, that's the dream. I wanna have a budget and then make a video. I don't wanna make a video and then get money for it that's like who knows how much it is, uh, or lose money for it, because in fact, we do lose money on pretty much every one of these episodes, so that is like totally a fact. What? They're yeah. more expensive to make than they get back? Yes, it's so fucked. It's like, it's such, like, I don't even know how we've kept it going for this long. Like, it really has been, like, some magic that we've been able to keep it going. Um, and it's also because of you guys that we've been able to keep it going. I mean, all of you guys out there who have donated to our Kickstarters and our Patreons and have bought posters and calendars, I mean, you guys are fucking awesome. Like, you really keep this boat afloat. And without you, it would have tanked a long time ago. <laughs> So are you saying that we're gonna have to start censoring ourselves? Is that what we have to do to make money? Fuck no, I am never gonna censor this fucking mouth, all right? This is, that's not even possible, okay? That's not, I curse in front of children like every day at the grocery store, all right? So oh my gosh. it's never gonna stop. Uh, so no matter how this works out for us, you know, we're gonna continue to do this show as long as we can, uh, as long as we can make it work and find the budgets from other things, uh, even if we don't get ad revenue, even if all of our ad revenue is pulled, I'd like to find a way to keep doing this. And one of the ways that we can keep doing this is if you guys help support us on Patreon. We just rolled one of those out. You can go check it out, patreon.com slash comicbookgirl19. We don't make this show to make a profit. We make this show because we love making this show. And we make this show because you guys like our show. And so that's the deal, man. We're gonna keep doing this as long as we can, as long as it's feasible for us. Until I get some money to make a real movie and then I'm getting the fuck out and I'm making a real movie! Yeah. Oh, making a show! Making a show! We're out. <laughs> Everything has a negative and a positive. And the positive aspect of all this for me is it just pushes me to leave the nest. You know, it pushes me to go out there to look at new opportunities. In fact, this month uh, we have sold a show and we're actually have been given an actual budget to make a show. So we sold our first show. Yay. It's called Greater Creators. We're so excited about it. it. Yes, you're in it. Yay! Um, and we're gonna be filming 14 episodes at the end of the month, so we might be kind of MIA a little bit at the end of the month, because we're gonna be like doing a lot of shooting, you know what I'm saying? It's gonna be pretty crazy. It's like my very own Olympic event for 2016. Hopefully I don't fuck it up and I stick the landing. And I know a lot of you out there get really frustrated when we do have to go out there and do these side projects uh, and it takes us away from our YouTube and we're not able to give you content on the weekly. And I totally understand where you're coming from and I wish we were in a place where we didn't have to do that. But the thing is, is because we don't make enough on YouTube from the ad revenue, we do have to do these other side gigs in order to keep the show going at all. Um, and that's why you see things like Epic History X-Men Volume 3 on Vimeo. I can't make an hour long documentary uh, and put it out for free on YouTube, okay? That's just, it's a lot of work that goes into that. And so, you know.
poop. <laughs> Shut up.